In this short film, we will recount the details of the Eastwick Urban Renewal Plan in Eastwick, Pennsylvania, and the Washington Park Project in Over the Rhine, Cincinnati, in order to shed light on the different development agencies that impact the changing landscape of cities in different time periods. We will argue that even with different organizations running the redevelopment of these areas, and their redevelopments occurring in different time periods, there are common themes that run through urban renewal projects of all types. The implementation of urban renewal projects in Eastwick, Pennsylvania and Over the Rhine, Ohio demonstrates the historic and social significance that arose from urban renewal projects nationally. Each urban renewal project is unique from others in the organizations that pioneered them as well as the social consequences that arose from them. This little known history of urban planning is relevant because urban redevelopment is still occurring today and is still greatly impacting lower income communities. Looking back to our past is a great way to learn from the mistakes of our predecessors and improve the way we redevelop communities moving forward. In the mid-1900s, reformers in the United States began to take over blighted areas through the use of eminent domain. These areas would then be used in urban renewal projects where the goal was to build back neighborhoods or regions that were more useful and fit the aesthetic of the developing city. Urban renewal has had a tumultuous history with both benefits and drawbacks. One large drawback that many individuals and families faced during the 1950s was displacement from their homes with little compensation. These are common themes that often run through urban redevelopment projects everywhere, and now we will take a dive into looking at our case studies to analyze how, even though different types of agencies may have run the redevelopment projects, we can still draw out these previously listed similarities. In the southwestern corner of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, there's a set of neighborhoods known as Eastwick, Pennsylvania. This region is quite close to the present-day Philadelphia airport and lies in close proximity to a river that passes through the area. Within the Eastwick region, there were 11 working-class neighborhoods. These neighborhoods were quite diverse. They included people from different racial backgrounds and families from a variety of income levels. In the 1900s, the neighborhoods were viewed as very rundown areas. There were abandoned houses, many of which were well below the level of the river that passed through Eastwick. This was made for many floods. Eastwick did not have an abundance of sewers, leading to problems with sanitation. When the redevelopment and urban renewal movement began in the 1950s, these shortcomings made Eastwick an easy target for redevelopment. The Eastwick area was determined to be predominantly open land that was not an being used well, and the land that was used was not bringing in revenue or had unsafe conditions. The land that was in use was viewed as dilapidated, poorly taken care of, and in need of revitalization. This poor land use, along with the flooding and poor sanitation conditions, served as the reasons for designating Eastwick, Pennsylvania as blighted and in need of urban redevelopment. The property was seized by government and officials started making plans for redevelopment, as they did in many other communities. In the redevelopment of Eastwick, the main goals were to get rid of the substandard housing, redevelop that land into more useful infrastructure, and to increase connectivity in Eastwick through development of major secondary roads. The redevelopment of substandard housing was one of the main goals. Citizens and city council members insisted on preserving housing that was in good condition. There were several other smaller goals for the project, including improving land use efficiency, adding industry to the area, improving housing quality, attracting 50,000 residents to the neighborhoods, incorporating recreational areas, and including integrated neighborhoods. Similar to many urban renewal projects in this time period, the Eastwick Urban Renewal Plan was implemented rather slowly because it was an open occupancy project and some of the blight that existed made parts of the project undevelopable. Eventually, the demolition of old housing and construction of new buildings sped up and many new housing units were built and available to buyers. Industrial sites followed the same slow trajectory as housing units, but they were slowly built with the intent to bring jobs to the area and revitalize the neighborhood's economy. The neighborhoods in New Eastwick saw a transformation in their sewage and drainage system because of the new sewer systems that were put in place. After the slow redevelopment of Eastwick, the final product of New Eastwick met some but not all of the expectations of the plan. There were 4,022 new housing units built in the redevelopment zone, but the number of residents the developers hoped to attract fell short of the 50,000 resident goal. 
the industrial regions of New Eastwick also fell a bit short of the goals outlined in the original plan. 40 firms were built by the middle of the 1980s and they employed about 2,000 individuals. Additionally, goals of connectivity through development of secondary roads were met. Now that we have discussed the scope of the Eastwick PA Renewal Project, we can move to talking about OTR and reflect on the commonalities and differences between these two redevelopment projects. Over the Rhine is an urban neighborhood located near the heart of downtown Cincinnati in southwestern Ohio, approximately nine hours away from Eastwick, PA. The neighborhood of Over the Rhine was established along the Ohio River by German immigrants in the early 1800s, several years later than the development of the Philadelphia region. After World War II, there were many anti-German movements within Over the Rhine, and the original German population began moving out to other towns along the Ohio River and farther north. Residents of downtown Cincinnati were struggling to keep their jobs after the war, and many homeless people and families found shelter in OTR. As African American families were displaced from the West End and downtown Cincinnati, they began forming communities in OTR as well. Along the southern boundary of the neighborhood on Elm Street lies Washington Park, a shared community park and green space. The park was constructed in 1855 to provide a natural park area for residents to enjoy. There were paved sidewalks, benches, a fountain, a swimming pool, and lots of green space. This area drew in immigrants because the city had lots of job opportunities and housing options. As the demographic was shifting, wealthier white communities began moving out of downtown Cincinnati, which was harmful to the economy and left OTR vulnerable to becoming a slum. Similar to Eastwick, PA, and many other urban redevelopment projects, in the 1950s, the neighborhood of OTR was deemed blighted due to increased crime and rundown buildings. Also, Washington Park was no longer used like it had been previously by families of OTR. The original redevelopment plan for OTR was to destroy slums and rebuild more expensive housing developments and build a new highway system through the neighborhood, similar to the roadway goals of the Eastwick plan. This tactic was used in other parts of downtown Cincinnati, and instead of helping the crime and poverty issue, it only made them worse. In 2003, 3CDC, the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation, was formed and began implementing urban renewal projects throughout the area. Their goal was to draw back people into the city from the suburbs by creating more housing options for families and younger individuals. 3CDC redeveloped many pre-existing buildings in OTR before creating a plan for Washington Park. The redevelopment plan for Washington Park, quote, included a 450-space underground parking garage, a performance stage, civic lawn, event plaza, interactive water feature with lights and sound, children's playground, dog park, restored historic bandstand, seasonal planting beds, and a half acre of meandering pathways through beautiful, mature landscaping, end quote. Much like Eastwick's goal of attracting new residents, the purpose of these features was to draw visitors to the neighborhood and back into the city because so many had moved out during the mid-1900s. The park plan featured kid and family-friendly amenities that were meant to make it accessible and useful by all age groups. The underground parking garage was a massive selling point for visitors coming from outside the city who no longer had to worry about finding decent parking in the city. The increase in foot traffic opened opportunities for new businesses in the area, which meant new retailers and customers brought old and abandoned buildings back to life. During the time when Washington Park was being renovated, private developing companies were creating new housing units near the park, which attracted younger people looking for homes in the city. This new demographic began moving into housing units because they could afford higher prices and were more likely to use the newest amenities than some of the existing residents. The new dog park and interactive water features of the park suggested the developers were more interested in bringing in a younger, wealthier demographic rather than families with children or people with lower incomes. Among existing residents and city developers, there was debate over the intended actions of the Washington Park urban renewal that ultimately changed the demographic of the community. This type of debate and unrest also existed in the Eastwick community. Throughout the previous sections, some common themes have been highlighted along with some differences between these two redevelopment projects. Here, a closer look at the way each of these projects was planned and carried out provides a window into understanding broader historical shifts in the objectives, legal basis, and public oversight of urban redevelopment agencies. The agencies that led the redevelopment of Eastwick and Over the Rhine are quite different from one another. In Eastwick, Pennsylvania, the agency that led the redevelopment was a public sector group called the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority. 
And over the Rhine, almost all of the redevelopment projects were developed through 3CDC, the Cincinnati Center City Development Corporation. 3CDC is a private, nonprofit corporation that was founded in 2003 with the goal of revitalizing the central business district of Cincinnati and the neighborhood of OTR. The public sector agency, the Redevelopment Authority of Philadelphia, created a design plan for New Eastwick that attempted to reach different goals for the region. The developers wrote that this plan is a combination of one block plus a variation on another in a pattern of alternating loop streets serving the area between two collector streets. It has many advantages over the objectionable features appearing in some other plans. Loop streets serve about 80% of the homes, the traffic does not travel in these streets, and the redevelopment of local traffic is reduced by their shape. After the creation of the plan, the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority was tasked with presenting their plan to the City Council and the Planning Commission. In comparison, in OTR, 3CDC knew the park was outdated, but had the potential to be revived and become a focal point of the city. In order to start the process of redevelopment in the city, the City of Cincinnati gave permission to the Urban Land Institute in 1996 to identify the issues in the city and propose solutions. Their plans included ways to best suit the diverse population in the city by creating a comprehensive plan that allowed input from various groups of people that would be affected by the redevelopment. In 2002, the OTR Comprehensive Plan was created to guide the process of redevelopment for the Washington Park area. The Planning Steering Committee was formed from these groups in an effort to collaborate on the best ways to help the city flourish once again without destroying the value and history of the neighborhood. When the Eastwick plan was drawn up and it seemed certain that the area would face urban renewal, citizens of the neighborhood were not pleased. The disapproval of the Eastwick residents became visible in the protests that arose. The citizens were not happy with the goals of the plan because they believed it left out moderate-priced housing, which would leave many individuals in the middle class without appropriate housing. These protests from citizens became so intense that it seemed that the citizens may get their way and stop the city council from approving the plan. In contrast, when the Washington Park Redevelopment Plan was proposed, many saw it as a great opportunity to bring life back to an area in OTR that had been forgotten. Others saw it as gentrification and believed the steps 3CDC was taking to revitalize OTR were harmful to the communities already living there. Some argued that the park's renovation ignored the needs of the present community. Instead, they believed it focused on drawing in new residents of a different demographic and class. For example, they built a dog park instead of a basketball court and a large fountain instead of a swimming pool. These changes did not reflect the needs of the present community and neighborhood. New residential developments in the area were much more expensive than existing housing, which forced some communities to relocate because they could not afford the redeveloped housing and they did not have a say in the building construction happening in OTR. 3CDC received some pushback from communities living near the park because they were directly affected by the redevelopment. Back in Pennsylvania, if the Eastwick City Council did not approve the plan made by the Redevelopment Authority of Philadelphia in response to the protest, Eastwick would have lost $54 million in grants that were meant to go towards urban renewal. Promises of urban renewal bringing industry to Eastwick tempted the Planning Commission and City Council. Despite the spirited protests that showed the residents' passion and commitment to their neighborhoods and homes, the City Council did not change their minds on the seizure and redevelopment of Eastwick, Pennsylvania. The revised plan for the redevelopment was approved and the developers moved forward with the project. 3CDC partnered with the City of Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Park Board, and the Cincinnati Corporate and Philanthropic Community to complete the park redevelopment. After writing the comprehensive plan, they put together a consensus building model with the purpose of getting input from residents on the layout and design of the new park. The consensus building model was approved by the City and 3CDC was granted permission to be in construction. The redevelopment of Washington Park had significant social and economic impacts on the surrounding communities and businesses. Renovating the park brought people back to the area, both for residential reasons and for shopping or leisure. Private developing companies also renovated apartment buildings in the area during this time, and the upcoming park was a huge factor that drew people back to this neighborhood. These reminders from the past loudly display that the agency that is in charge of the urban renewal plan has a lot of control over the project and how involved the community gets to be. In the case of OTR, 3CDC has complete control over the redevelopment plan and consulted the community, but ultimately the organization had final say. 
This was mainly due to the fact that the community was underrepresented in the local government because there were many low-income families and individuals who were not consulted during the planning. In contrast, the Redevelopment Authority of Pennsylvania got more pushback from the citizens of Eastwick because it was a public group that received feedback from the community and was represented through their local government. The urban renewal projects in both Over the Rhine and Eastwick are unique in the way that the local community reacted and engaged with the redevelopment agency and plans, but they have deep similarities that show the historic and social importance of urban planning and the consequences that can arise. It has been displayed throughout this film that urban redevelopment was a common theme in cities from the 1950s to present day. Reflecting on what drives these redevelopment projects and looking at their outcomes is essential to the future of urban planning.